Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. So today is going to be the second approach for enhancing lip gloss. In a previous video, I showed how you could enhance lip gloss in a more realistic kind of way. This approach is kind of taking it much further, uh, much glossier, but a little less realistic. But it's based on an example that someone provided of how in Photoshop you can do some pretty sophisticated uh, techniques with uh, bevels and lighting and reflection from a given selection. And uh, from the little bits that I have played around with layer styles that PaintShop Pro provides and even just effects that kind of fall in this category, I don't believe we're going to be able to get to the level of fidelity that uh, shown in the video. So what I'm just going to show is an approach for how you can replicate extremely glossy lips in PaintShop Pro. So let's get to it. So I'm going to demonstrate this technique with this very interesting photograph of lips that I got off of Pexels.com. And a lot of the steps are going to follow another tutorial that I had on digital painting. Because it really, in a way, what we're going to be doing is digital painting and then using some vector graphics and a whole lot of masks. So the first step in this process is to create, um, you know, something that's going to kind of overlay the different shapes of the mouth. And I'm going to focus on just one lip and explain the whole process and then just kind of speed through the generation of the second part of the lip just so that I'm not repeating myself. But for the first lip, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by drawing a vector shape. So I'm going to grab my pen, I'm going to turn off my stroke as I don't need that, and then just picking a color. We can either pick a blue from our palette or we can hold our cursor over the uh, fill color, hold control, and then sample just any color that's on the picture itself, and then that can be the source of our color. And then I'll use the draw point-to-point -point Bezier curves just to make this a little bit simpler. So I can simply click here and click here and then just kind of drag this and try to get roughly the shape of this, the top of this bottom lip. And then since I want to create a sharp point to go underneath, I can actually go to this node and then just say node type is cusp. And now I can, you know, bend this guy around so that now when I add like my second node, well, we're gonna have to fix that a little bit. It at least gives me it going in the right direction. So we can shrink this one a little bit. Click on this node. That one's probably okay. Click off somewhere just to get this next node. And then we'll, we'll adjust some of this shape near the end here. And then actually to close this off, I'm just gonna drag this one so that it's close to this one and then hit join. So now I'll just clean up some of these nodes real quick just to make the shape match the original picture a little bit better. And then once we're happy with the shape, we can just hit apply. So once we're happy with that shape, what we want to do is create a mask. So what we can do is select the magic wand and make sure the match mode is set to opacity. And then we can very simply click on our shape. And then from this selection, we're gonna create a mask. However, we don't, we don't really wanna you know, maintain these sharp edges. We wanna make that a little bit softer just so that it blends a little bit better. So what we can do is go to Selection, Modify, and then say Feather. And we don't need very much feathering. It's just enough to kind of take that hard aliased edge off of it. So in this case, like I'll do three. So we have our slightly you know, feathered edge here. And then we can say mask show or show selection. 
So then what we have now is we have our, you know, vector shape with a slightly softer edge because it's masked from the layer we just created. Now, the main point of this creating this vector shape is to kind of mute the the color here a little bit. Oops. To mute the natural color of the lips because you know, the, in the example image that was shown, you know, the, the new sort of reflective lighting kind of dominates the shininess, but at the same time, you know, it, it's going to kind of conflict if you have too much of the original texture showing through. So this adds a little bit of a color bump and it kind of mutes the original lighting that was there. And this is pretty good so far, but what we need to do is kind of give some shape back to this lower lip. And since we have our mask, we can do this very simply by creating a new raster layer under the mask, and then just selecting our paintbrush, make it a little bit larger and choose, you know, a darker color, right? Something, maybe we can take just the color that we have, make it a little bit darker. Want to go with a low, low hardness just so that it blends pretty well and pretty nicely in here. And then we can just paint you know, some of that lighting effect back in, but that's a little too strong. So we can bring the opacity back down. And you can use the underlying lighting of the image as your reference, right? We can see where the bright parts are kind of more in the middle. And then the, you know, there's a little bit of darker underneath and even on top. So we're really just trying to bring some of that detail back, but in a much sort of cleaner, cleaner approach. And really what this is also doing is kind of giving the lips a little bit more shape. All right, so now that we've done sort of our painted layer, then the next thing we need to do is we need to add the reflection. And this is where it's gonna take a little bit of practice and a little bit of creativity, and a lot of how you do this is gonna dictate the overall shape of the lip. A lot of things affect the way a light source looks, right? If you have multiple panels of lights, or if the light is long and rectangular, or if it's circular, or if there's a lot of little lights, the reflection is gonna be very different. In this case, just for simplicity, I'm going to assume a very uniform and rectangular light source. So I'm going to do this independent of the first group that we created. I'm going to create a new vector layer. And I'm going to create another drawing, but this time what I want is for the fill to be white. So once again, using the draw point to point, but using the Bezier curves, Maybe starting here and then ending here and then once again giving it a nice a nice curve to it. Again we're probably going to have a sharp point here so we're going to change our node type to cusp and then bring this in and even shrink it down a little bit. We'll add the next node here to start. And then we'll add another node at the end, but then we'll just drag these two together to join them. Changing the node type just so that I can get these handles back and give myself a little bit more control. This kind of messed up my shape though. And so the thing about this is the, you know, the, the, this sort of shiny reflection really needs to kind of map the shape of the lip. And then what we're going to do is actually mask it so that it doesn't, it doesn't go too far and it kind of blends in much more with the image. So we'll draw it pretty big to begin with, and that's fine. maybe fix this angle just a little bit, bring it down. So it matches the shape of the mouth a little bit better. All 
All right, so we have our reflection on that lower lip, and then what we can do is go to New Mask and say Show All. And then now with the mask layer selected, what we want is to have black on the stroke, white on the fill, and then we can just use a regular paintbrush. And by painting black, we can begin to you know, hide some of this reflection and or blend it into the scene better. And in some ways, this is where the shaping is also going to happen with the lighting. If you have a drawing tablet, this can be a little bit simpler, made simpler from that. I'm just used to using a my mouse, and so I'm I'm just using that as I'm painting this in. And keeping in mind that the 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 sharper you keep the edge, right, the more the the, the glossier the lips are gonna look. And that's always going to be controlled by how hard you make the the brush. Now just to make, you know, turning it on and off easier to see kind of the difference, what we can do is put or create a new layer group and then just keep everything keep both of the vector and the or the color and the shine in that one group and I can call this lower lip and that's basically the technique that you see right there and so what I'm gonna do is just show a sped up version of me doing the top lip just so that we end up with a final image. So there you have it. Like I kind of mentioned before, you know, this this is a much more extreme sort of application of glossy lips. And in a way, uh, personally, I feel like it, it kind of loses the realism. I think, um, you know, bevel capabilities uh, in Photoshop probably do a better job of, you know, getting physics a little bit more accurate in terms of lighting. You know, I'm I'm not going to say that I'm great at it, but this is generally the a approach you can take. It is going to take some creativity and practice on your part to get the lighting and like, you know, how you want the glint and everything to work out. But generally speaking, doing sort of this, you know, coloring of the basic lip shape and then adding that sort of higher level vector graphic, you know, and then blending it into the image will give you something that at least looks like a super gloss effect. Um, although it's kind of like borderline cartoony apart from some of the texture that's coming through at the original lip image. So just finally having grouped everything up, um, just being able to see the difference, right? A very textured, but you know, fairly glossy and shiny set of lips to the very extreme bubbly kind of super smooth uh, lips. Anyway, that's it for me for this one. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you would like to get updates of new content that I post, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page on the link on the TV. And I'll see you guys next time.